What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. I know it's been a very long time since I've said anything even close to that, but um, I guess lots changed. I still have the Subaru of course, you know, biggest pain in my butt, but I mean, still here. I actually just got the new built transmission put in. A week after I put the motor in, got it all turned up, it was making, I don't know, it's probably making 550 to the tire. I blew fourth gear in the trans. Um, I'll insert that video here. So yeah, I wasn't even really being mean to it yet. I was still kind of being easy on the motor and it wasn't even turned up all the way and the trans blew. So I took it to off the line performance in Des Moines, Iowa, which I'm sure a lot of you Subaru guys know that name. Uh, honestly, they are the best Subaru shop in the country. Them and Prime Motoring out in New Jersey. Obviously off the line's a lot closer to me. I live in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I'm from Rapid City. Actually, one of the things that's changed is I now live in Sioux Falls. Um, I'm a technician at Audi now, so I do that for my full time, and and I just you know work on these. But the Subaru now has the built transmission in, new steering wheel, got the interior cleaned up a little bit, motors in, cars running. Um, unfortunately, I did find. A little bit of metal in the motor which is not what I wanted but I mean I guess it is what it is I will have a closed deck coming soon and I'm just gonna have fun with this one until it pops I guess I'm just expecting it to pop whenever it does uh, last thing I need to do is I'm just swapping a ball joint here but today in this video I'm going to be installing an STI cluster um, just that DCCD, that's really nice having it and it looks a lot better. So that's what I'm gonna be showing you how to do. I'm gonna swap over to the GoPro on the inside here and I'll get you a closer view and kind of walk through it step by step. All right, so we're on the inside of the car here. I know the audio probably sounds a little bit different on the GoPro. First thing we're gonna do, obviously take off the steering wheel, get that out of here. Um, and then I'm going to lower the steering column all the way down and I'm going to take out these two screws right here to get this trim piece out. All right, so I'm gonna be pretty thorough with this or at least try to be at least. Um, after you get those two screws out and pull this piece off here, you're going to take out the two screws on the bottom down there then there's one right here that you're gonna take out and the gauge cluster can slide out. And then after you do that, I will show you the wiring. Um, it's pretty simple. There's only a couple wires you have to swap, nothing too crazy. Um, and then you have to modify a connector so it'll plug in right. All right, so I also just moved my AFR gauge out of the way real quick. Um, but the cluster is just going to come out. Um, let me unplug them first. The wires aren't quite long enough, so go ahead and unplug. There's three plugs up top here, and they're just push. You just push a clip, and they pull out of the cluster. Okay, so what I'm doing next is I'm going to very, very carefully cut uh, the tape on the connectors here. You don't need to mess with this first one, but these two you're gonna be messing around with. So um, basically the way you can kind of look at it is connector A, connector B, connector C. Um, we're gonna be swapping 
connector C9. So that is this uh, brown wire right here. The GoPro doesn't zoom very well. This one I'm actually gonna switch over to the other camera so I can show you a better view. Okay, so now that we've got a little better view here, we're gonna take, if you look at them with the buttons on the bottom, we're gonna take connector C9, which is this brown wire right here. There are numbers on the pins, but I'm just gonna visually show you. This brown wire right here, C9, we're gonna put that into B4. The, let's see here. So that's gonna be this pin right here. And we're gonna just very carefully de-pin this. Um, you can cut it and re-pin it if you want. It's just a lot easier if you just very carefully de-pin this connector and swap, like I said, this brown wire right here, C9, it's next to the blue and red wire. I'm gonna put that into B4. And then what we're gonna do, um, I haven't really looked at this one yet, I've just seen it on the diagram. Let's see, we're gonna swap B28 into B16. And that one, I haven't found that yet, so I'll let you guys find that, or I'll show you when I find it here. There are numbers. So C9 onto B4, B28 onto B16. All right, so let's just take a second here and appreciate this. I forgot my de-pinning tool at work, or anything close to it working. Uh, the pick I was using was way too big, the one that I have here at my shop. And so I had my Cornwell die grinder here and I took a cheap pick <laughs> and I just ground it down and I think this actually might work. So I'll show you how to depin this real quick and we should be to the final steps here pretty soon. Okay, so yes, this depinning tool that I just ghetto rig does work. What you're gonna do is you're gonna pop this clip up like this. You are going to use, you can see the clip is up top here and the hole that I'm using is the slightly larger hole and it basically, it's just a detent. So you'll push it in and then after you push it all the way in, sorry I'm doing this with one hand, you can pull the wire out. And then like I said, let me pull up the diagram one more time here. Just so I can be sure which one goes where. So C9, this one I just pulled out, goes to B4, which is this one. So you're just gonna pop that clip up, push it in, close the clip. It's not that difficult. And then B28 goes to B16. And after you do those both like that, we'll tape them up good and we will make sure that the cluster works. All right, so just to show you quick here, this row, again, sorry, this is on the GoPro, the other camera's recording right now. So 28 is gonna be this one here, this blue and red one, and then 16 is gonna be the second one over. Actually, let's make sure. Yeah, second one over on this row. So you'll swap those then swap this one into um, B4, which is the fourth one over. Okay, and then the last thing before you install the actual cluster itself is going to be um, modifying this clip here. So again, A, B, C, this one's gonna be clip A, and the top of the connector where the button is, you're gonna shave these here these two kind of guides. You're gonna shave them off. Whatever you use, just don't ruin the connector, don't melt it. I'm probably just gonna use a razor blade or something, maybe a pair of dikes or something like that, and I'll get them off of here, and I will update you when that is off.
I almost forgot what I told you guys was very important. And it, it is, but it isn't at the same time. Um, it's just something, nice peace of mind. Make sure it's clean in there. Tape them all up. Tape all your wires up. Uh, especially since you rearranged stuff. Um, plug it in, plug in your cluster, make sure it works. And then after you do that, tape them up, hard fit everything, plug it in and put your trim back together. Super easy. All right guys, so like I said, before you get everything all hard mounted and taped up and everything, um, make sure that the cluster works, which it does. Gosh, that is awesome. Now, unfortunately, this one does say 154,000 miles, which this car does not have, but I'll live with that. Matching red gauges, everything. I love it. This is awesome. I'm gonna tidy everything up here and we'll finish up the video. Alrighty guys, so sorry I didn't film an outro at the shop, but I'm back home now. I'm in the GTO. Um, this thing is obnoxiously loud. I'll show an exhaust clip in the next video, or maybe I'll just throw one in right now. Yeah, so this thing is obnoxious. I put some long tube headers on it, and it needs a tune now. Um, I deleted the rear O2s, so it needs a tune. I'll probably put a fast LSX intake manifold and 102 millimeter throttle body on it. Really wake this thing up, but my main focus right now is just getting the Subaru going the way it should, and then inevitably waiting for the motor to pop again. Um, it's just a never-ending loop with that car, but when it's working the way it should, it's definitely worth it. But I hope this video was helpful to any of you that are going to be doing the same thing I just did, which is putting that STI cluster into your WRX. That is a pretty universal thing for all GD chassis. As far as I'm aware, it should be pretty much the exact same process for any GD WRX to um, the STI cluster. So thank you guys for watching. I'm sorry I've been dark for so long, but no more. I will be posting as much as I can now, and I definitely want to get back into this YouTube thing. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Thank you. Peace out. Stay classy.